one down, three more to go. This one did not seat properly. Hey, you have to get this just right. Very nice. Oh, what awful noise. I think I should mount this panel first with midpoint clamps. That might be a lot easier than this. Now, unfortunately, I ordered the wrong size end clamp. I thought this panel was 35 millimeters, but it's actually 40 millimeters. These solar panels come in three sizes, 30, 35, and 40. And the clamp that comes with the array is a 35 millimeter clamp. So be sure to measure your solar panel and order the correct size end clamp. They're only a couple dollars, so it's not hard to swap them out. But yeah, it's not supposed to look like this. So be sure you order the proper size. So unfortunately we're using zip ties, but it's preferable to use the metal clamps for wire management behind the panels. Now grounding this array is the next step. You have hardware that's included with this array. These pieces right here go under the midpoint clamps and these electrically connect or bond the solar panel rails to these main support rails. But you don't have to use these. You could actually use your own with the grounding screw holes on the solar panel, or you could buy a grounding clamp. There's all sorts of options on the market. After everything's bonded with these, you're going to use these clamps on the rails to electrically connect this array to an earth grounding conductor. It's pretty easy to use. Let's try to slide it on real quick. And you tighten it down. Now this is an earth grounding conductor. We're going to insert it and tighten it down. Now this array is very low to the ground because I have it mounted directly into the concrete. But for most people, you're going to have raised ballast buckets and that will lift up the array off the ground. That's very important, especially if you're using bifacial solar panels. You wanna lift them up off the ground as much as possible. And the higher off the ground, the better for those types of panels. These are traditional monocrystalline, so that doesn't matter at all. Now, if you have multiple arrays in rows, you're gonna to have to space them out enough so that during winter, your front array is not casting a shadow on the back array. So use an online calculator to figure out how much they need to be spaced apart, and you'll be good to go. Now these solar panels produce 400 watts each, so the whole array can output 1600 watts. Now in the near future, we're gonna have other ground mount arrays just like this one that we're gonna review because this is so crucial for people building a DIY off-grid system that we really need to cover it more on this channel. This one is a little over $200 and for the amount of panels that you can put on it, I would say it's pretty good. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys liked it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.